multi-cylinder hot hatchback used to be a thing, didn't it? And it wasn't that long ago. I remember cars like the Golf R32 and the Alpha 147 GTA very well. Now, of course, the hot hatchback itself is a bit of an endangered species. We should be grateful that we've still got it at all, really. But this car, this might be the last hot hatchback going with more than four cylinders. This is the new Audi RS3. Now I'm gonna shut up for a minute, just for a second, so we can appreciate it. Just give it a listen. It's a rather lovely thing, isn't it? So this version, like the last one, uses Audi's five-cylinder, 2.5-litre turbocharged engine. Power's the same as it was before, just under 400 horsepower, which is plenty. Torque has risen a little bit by about, I think, 15 pounds a foot, so it's 369 pound foot. This is the first RS3 that will do 62 miles an hour from rest in less than four seconds. It's also 180 miles an hour Audi A3, which is bonkers really, isn't it? I mean, you would imagine an Audi A3 would just either flip end over end or break apart completely at, at 180 miles an hour. They must have done a lot of high-speed autobahn testing with this car, you would think. Let's hope so. It's just bonkers. Of course, the RS3 has been a bonkers A3 for a, for a few generations. You know, it's been a very fast car for a while. This one's a bit different, though, because they've put the effort in elsewhere. It's a bit like they've sort of thought, well, listen, we can either cut and run like everybody else. We can either sort of be resigned to the beginning of the end of the performance car or we can really commit you know we can give this last RS3 both barrels and we can be that that last reveler at the party up till dawn running on Jägermeister and Sherbet Fountains because you know the end is coming so we might as well be there selling fast five cylinder Audis until somebody comes and puts the boss in prison. Oh no, wait, they already did that, didn't they? So, the engine is pretty much the same as it was, a little bit more torquey. The gearbox has a wider spread of ratios that helps deliver the extra performance. But as I say, it's the chassis and the suspension that's had the real work. So this RS3 gets brand new dampers. They don't feature on any other VW Group product and they can be adaptive if you want. It's got a, a front axle track that's considerably wider than the last car, so something like 33 millimeters wider. It's got wider front wheels too, for more a, a more grippy front axle. It's got wider 19 inch front alloy wheels too, and it runs quite a lot more negative camber on the front axle than it used to, um, and a little bit more on the back. This is also the latest four wheel drive hot hatch to get one of those clever torque vectoring rear differentials. It's the same one that goes on the Volkswagen Golf R, predictably enough. They call it the RS torque splitter and Volkswagen calls it something else, but it's the same kit. And it's two clutches either side of a, a crown gear diff. And so it can go, it can take all of the torque that goes to the rear axle, which is generally around about half um, with this four wheel drive system. And then it can throw that at either rear wheel if it wants to. So you can get half of all the torque that the engine's making at the outside rear wheel when you're turning into a corner. Which makes quite a big difference. And they're throwing quite a lot of technology at this car as well, besides that diff, because they're Audi. They can't make this the most hardcore hot hatchback going because it has to be nice and a bit luxurious. So what they've done is just empty the, empty the cupboards and just giving it everything they can to add a bit of special hot hatchback flavour. So you can have the adaptive dampers I've talked about, the clever diff, you can have carbon ceramic brakes, you can even have Pirelli Trofeo R tyres on this car if you want them. Now the last car I drove on those was I think the McLaren Senna. So that's not messing about is it? This thing is specced like a £200,000 supercar and it's an Audi A3. It's a bit mental. So let's deal with the engine first. It's good. Oh, 
pretty fast as well. So it's still got that slightly laggy, boosty feel. You know, it's the kind of engine, funnily enough, that could do with a 48 volt hybrid electric turbo. One of those little ones that they use to sharpen up th throttle response because it's great when it's boosting, but it just takes that fraction of a second to wake up when you come on the pedal, particularly at low revs. It feels a little bit old fashioned, a little bit like five cylinders you used to feel. But it's a lovely, enigmatic, characterful thing. It's a great engine. It would have been a huge shame if they'd just gone, you know what, it's 2021. We can't put five cylinder motors in hatchbacks anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Let's just chuck it away. God, what an absolute disaster that would have been. The ride isn't too bad either. I mean, this is a pretty nasty surface and it's dealing with it all right. Those new dampers are impressive things. And of course they're adaptive, so you can just stick it in comfort mode and just drive this like it was a 1.4 litre petrol. It's, you know, I imagine it's a, it would be a very nice thing to daily. That, that's entirely the point. It's an Audi, right? You can just drive it to work if you fancy. The drift mode thing, yeah, it does do it. They set up a, a little exercise for us last night when we were drifting around some cones in a very large car park. Sounds pure old, but it's the sort of thing that companies like Audi do for pure old journalists like us. And yes, you can throw it around a bit, and when you turn everything off, it does sort of drift a little bit. Not like a rear wheel drive car would. You have to do quite a lot with the steering to keep front end tucked in. So you're busy, but yeah, it does skids after a fashion. The car's ride and handling is definitely the bigger development though, because RS3s have always been quick cars, haven't they? But this one, definitely handy. So that wider front track and, and the wider tyre has made a big difference to the way the car steers. When you stick it in the sportier driving modes, the steering becomes a lot more interactive and tactile than fast Audi steering generally is. So you can feel it pick up on the camber of the road and things. And the car does turn in much better than RS3s used to. It's better balanced. It's one of those sort of modern torque vectors, four wheel drive hot hatchbacks that you sort of feel like you're overdriving in tighter corners, second and third gear corners. You, you kind of have to overwork the front axle to feel what the rear axle wants to do and how it wants to move around. That's not always as rewarding as it might be because the car just never seems to be settled. But when you get it going a little bit faster, when the bends are sort of more flowing, a bit longer, then the diff can really influence the handling of the car. It can start to move the attitude of the car around. You can feel the outside rear wheel start to drive the car into the curve, into towards the apex. And then it is that bit more interesting to drive, that bit, of be that bit better handling, a bit, bit more engaging than RS3s have ever been. This thing isn't just some kind of rocket-powered A3 anymore. It's got a bit more going on. I like it, but then I should really. You ought to, for what it costs. One of these, with the right options, it's a £55,000 car now. And you can spend another 10 grand on one if you want absolutely everything. And I just find that a bit a bit difficult to wrap my head around, even in 2021, you know. A £60,000 Audi A3 is almost as absurd an idea as an A3 that will do 180 miles an hour. I don't know which is weirder. I guess people who are into these cars probably don't think about the price too much. They just want the maddest hot hatchback they can get into and they'd never buy a Golf R or a Mercedes A45 because they like Audis. And I guess that's fine, because there's nothing else, even the, you know, the Merc and the, the Golf, and there's, you know, none of them sound like this. None of them. Yeah, it's definitely a, a better car, this, and also a very expensive one. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.